In this video, we're going to take a look at the product rule for square roots. And so the product rule for square roots says let the square root of a and the square root of b be real numbers. Then the square root of a times the square root of b is equal to the square root of a times b. And if we have the square root of a times the square root of b and we set it equal to the square root of a times b, we're combining. And then if we have the square root of a times b and we set it equal to the square root of a times the square root of b, we call it splitting. In number one, it wants us to simplify by completing each step. So in A, we have the square root of 54. And we want to write factors of 54. So factors of 54 could be 1 and 54, the 2 and 27, 3 and 18, 18 and then 6 and 9. And the next direction says write set of factors containing perfect squares. So if we look across the factors we created, the only number that's a perfect square is our 9. So 6 and 9 is the set of factors that contains a perfect square. And then it wants us to rewrite the radicand using the factors above. So we have the square root of 54, and that can be written as the square root of 9 times 6 and now we want to use the product rule to split the radical so we're going to rewrite this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 6 and now it wants us to simplify and the square root of 9 is equal to 3 so we have 3 square root of 6 and B we have the square root of 6 times the square root of 3 and it wants us to use the product rule to combine the radicals. So the square root of 6 times the square root of 3 can be written as the square root of 18. And then it wants us to find a set of factors of the radicand that contain a perfect square. So 9 and 2 would be the factors that would contain a perfect square. And then rewrite the radicand using the factors above. So we're going to say that the square root of 18 is equal to the square root of 9 times 2. And then we can split them. So we can say that it's equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And that is equal to 3 square root 2. And now it tells us removing perfect squares from the radicand. One, if necessary, factor the constant term so that one of the factors is a perfect square. For each factor, divide each exponent of the radicand by the index. The outside exponent will be the quotient, and the inside exponent will be the remainder. So their example is the square root of a to the 11th is equal to a to the 5th times the square root of a and then simplify further if necessary. And it says note, after simplifying, the radicand should not contain any factors that are perfect squares. And two, it wants us to simplify the square root of six times 10 times a to the fifth, b to the 20th, c to the third. Assume a, b, and c represent positive real numbers. So it says simplify the radicand so we can write the square root of 6 times 10 times a to the 5th, b to the 20th, c to the 3rd as the square root of 60, a to the 5th, b to the 20th, c to the 3rd. And now write the constant term so that one of the factors is a perfect square. So factors of 60 that have a perfect square would be 4 and 15. So we're going to say this is equal to the square root of 4 times 15 times a to the 5th, b to the 20th, 
and c cubed. And now it wants us to remove perfect squares from the radical. So we're going to have the perfect square of 4 is 2. 15 is not a perfect square, and it will stay inside of our radical. a to the fifth, and if we do 5 divided by 2, that would give us 2. So we're going to have a squared. And then remember, the remainder stays inside the radical. So the 1 factor of a will stay inside the radical. b to the 20th, if we divide 20 by 2, we get 10. So we have b to the 10th. And c cubed, 3 divided by 2 is 1. So c on the outside. And then we're going to have a remainder of 1 still inside the radical. So now everything that was left inside the radical that was not a perfect square was 15, one factor of a, and one factor of c. Now it says simplifying expressions containing square roots. One, use the product rule to write as a single radical. Two, simplify the radicand using laws of exponents. If helpful, write the constant in prime factors. Remove perfect squares from the radicand and then simplify if necessary. So in three, they want us to simplify each expression by completing each step. Assume all variables represent positive numbers. In a, we have the square root of 20 times a to the negative third, a to the seventh, c to the negative seventh, times the square root of b to the fourth, c squared, all raised to the fifth power, times the square root of a squared b c squared. So the first thing they want us to do, apply the product rule. So we can say that this is equal to the square root of 20 a to the negative 3 a to the 7th c to the negative 7 and then we have b to the fourth c squared all raised to the fifth power and a squared b c squared and now we want to simplify the radicand and the first thing that I'm going to do is take care of everything inside the parentheses and raise it to the fifth power so we have 20 times a to the negative third a to the seventh c to the negative seventh times now we have b to the fourth raised to the fifth power so we have b to the twentieth and c to the tenth a squared b c squared and that is equal to and now we want to combine all of our like factors so we have the square root of 20 and we could write 20 as 4 times 5 if it's easier for you to see the coefficients in perfect squares and now we want to combine all of our a factors so we have a to the negative 3 a to the 7th and a squared so we have 2 plus 7 is 9 minus 3 is 6 a to the 6th and then all of our b factors are b to the 20th and b so b to the 21st and then we have c to the negative seventh c to the tenth and c squared so we have two plus ten is twelve minus seven is five so c to the fifth and now we want to remove perfect squares from the radical so we have this is equal to and the square root of four can be written as two and 5 is not a perfect square, it will stay inside of our radical. We have a to the 6th, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, so a cubed with no remainder. We have b to the 21st, 21 divided by 2 is 10 with a remainder of 1, so we have b to the 10th, and we'll have one factor of b inside of our radical still. c to the 5th, 5 divided by 2 is 2 with a remainder of 1 so c squared on the outside of the radical and now we're going to write everything that was not a perfect square inside the radical so we have five we had one factor of b and one factor of c 
in part B of number 3, we have 5a to the 4th times the square root of a times the square root of 4a squared b c to the 10th divided by 25b to the 11th. And the first thing it wants us to do is apply the product rule. So we have 5a to the 4th on the outside of the radical times the square root of a times 4a squared b c to the 10th divided by 25b to the 11th. And now we want to simplify the radicand. So we have, this is equal to 5a to the 4th times the square root of now we have the constant of 4 in the numerator, and then we have a times a squared is a cubed, and we have a c to the 10th in the numerator. And now in the denominator, we're going to have 25, and now we have b divided by b to the 11th, which would be b to the negative 10 in the numerator, or b to the 10th in the denominator. And now we want to remove perfect squares from the radical. So we have 5a to the 4th. And now if we take all the perfect squares out of the numerator, we would have 2 from the square root of 4. a cubed, 3 divided by 2 is 1 with a remainder of 1. So we have a coming out of the radical and 1a staying in. c to the 10th. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so c to the 5th with no remainder. And then divided by, we have the square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of b to the 10th, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so we have b to the 5th. And now we still have the square root of one factor of a. It was the only factor that had a remainder after we had perfect squares taken out. So now it wants us to simplify this expression. And we have 5 times 2 in the numerator, so that's 10. a to the 4th times a is a to the 5th. c to the 5th. And the square root of a all divided by 5b to the fifth. And then we can simplify this one more time, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. So we have 2a to the fifth, c to the fifth, times the square root of a in the numerator, divided by b to the fifth. And that's our video on the product rule for square roots.